Hello, everyone, and welcome to another live stream day with an awesome showcase of our basic ranged combat revamp. Um, excited to be here again, showing you guys Ashes of Creation and its current progress towards Alpha 2. I have joining me today two stellar senior designers on our team, senior designer Trad and Jeremy. How are you guys doing? doing well i'm um, just looking forward to showing some of the stuff we've been working on here oh i know it's always exciting jeremy how you doing buddy doing really good really excited to be here really excited to show the stuff we've got this time yes and i my first my first awe is of course the world just the unbelievably beautiful environments that uh the environment team and the design team have just come up with with these <laughs> ruins and this forest i mean where where are we at right now jeremy we are in the riverlands and which was the former heart of the alien empire Ooh. so we're among their ruins from a long time ago after the fall yeah and people saw some of these things um in the weather and seasons um mm -hmm. showcase yep. Uh, so you guys might recognize this stuff, but the Alien Empire, that was one of the largest, if not the largest empire at the town, the time of the apocalypse, right? Right. It was at the height of their golden age when the uh, the fall happened. So we are just standing in their ruins now. And it is it is so cool. I always love environments where you have these ancient almost artifacts and and just locations that you get to explore um it's and really compelling goals, yeah is to to make a living breathing world that's an actual character of our game vera should very much feel like a, a character that has so much history and story behind it uh they're like great fantasy worlds of the, uh, the past and other franchises vera should very much feel like one of those that just hearing the name invokes all kinds of history yes. and character and and living breathing and and actually a world that's been in trouble for a long time now and the, the players are coming back to help oh, rescue I, and recover I, that i love it and i also love the fact that chris atkins threw in some slits for this elf's ears <laughs> to come through oh my gosh that's so awesome i feel a lot comfortable <laughs> ears able to poke adorable through. <laughs> they are adorable. <laughs> this is such a great outfit. Um, I'm loving the, the cape cloth as well. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. So you were mentioning we are in an area that is uh, relatively dangerous, right? This is um, mm -hmm. these aren't elite monsters, right? But they are still deadly. These are looks like a minotaur uh, hunting party, war party that are investigating this area for some reason. It looks like some shaman have have come down to this riverland area and they're, oh. they're checking things out and they have some like guard dogs with them they've got some drudgers with them um kind of like reptilian dog kind of things that are acting as lookouts and guards while they're looking around for things oh no oh i'm walking oh, I'm, oh god <laughs> Oh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Just gonna oh, no. Wait. Uh, hold on one second. Chad, what should I do? What should I, what, 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 what items uh, or uh, abilities? Uh, spam two on one of them. Take that guy down. All right, that was a quick shot right there. Um, so quick shot is an ability that has three charges, um, and each shot does more damage than the last to the target that you're attacking. So you can kind of use it as an opener, alpha strike kind of ability. Oh no! Um, just to drop somebody. Do I have that two back again? The quick shot. Yep. Yeah, we haven't done like Woo! you know full cooldown pass on this or anything, so you can pretty much just spam right now. But. You got that oh, that guy pushed me. Oh dropping. God, I have 16 health. Uh, no, 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 no. The the shaman are not something to mess with. They're they've got that charge. How did they we draw? So how did I grab so many? They're, they're paying attention. Okay, hold on. Yeah, playing as a ranged player, you have to be aware of your surrounding. I did not. I was not aware of my surroundings. Okay, you guys may notice that I'm not dying right now. And I would just like to comment that the stream would not be good if I died trying to fight these things. What am I using here, Dredd? Uh, that would be snipe. 
Um, so unlike Quick Shot, that is an ability that you can press and hold, and it kind of roots you in place. So it's you, you gotta you gotta like use that at the right time. But you gotta you do get a lot of payoff if you can pull off the whole thing. Um, so the, the longer that you charge it, uh, the more damage it does. I need to get my some of my health back. I I, I, I apologize, stream. <laughs> I let me just say that. Whenever we do these recordings and I uh, am piloting, right? I have this very well thought out outline and plan about how things are going to go. And <laughs> somehow something happens and it just doesn't, it doesn't work. And I don't know why. It's like when Mike Tyson says, everyone has a plan until they're punched in the face. Right. Yeah. Every, no, no, no plan survives contact with the enemy. Um, but uh, so I, t I didn't, I turned on this cheat code, which doesn't let me die if I fall below one hit point. So every time you see me drop to one hit point, know that I would have normally just died there and you guys can, um, you know, take a shot of water or something. Um, point hopefully. for the Minotaur. Yeah, point for the Minotaur. <laughs> okay. So, uh, by the way, you guys are seeing, this is early morning here on the, the Varen Riverlands. Um, and you'll see that there's a lot of weather effects that are happening right here. There's some, there's some pollen because we're in the middle of spring, but it's also early morning. So we have this fog layer that's rolling through. Um, of course, the aesthetics of ashes of creation are very important. We've always said that, uh, game systems makes games fun. Um, and, uh, the game environment and the aesthetics make it, uh, make it beautiful and make it immersive. So, um, we double down on both of those, but Jeremy, talk to me a little bit about these Minotaurs. Who are these Minotaurs? Why are they here? So these Minotaur, well, prior to the fall, they were kind of uh, just a nomadic, chaotic race. They're a race that really benefited when the the player races left sanct or left for Sanctus. So they, in the intervening time, they've gotten stronger. They've kind of found some techniques, some um, help in some ways from other entities that aren't friendly. So they've, they've really uh, got organized, got um, equipped, and they're kind of actually excited to see the players come back because they want some revenge. So yeah, they are they're... looking for ways to, uh, they have oral histories and things that tell of these people that um, held them down and, and hunted them and they're, uh, they're brutally wanting to exact that revenge. Can I? Um, I'm going to cheat here again because I just want to get go up to them and give people a look at, at what these minotaurs look like in the game. Mm -hmm. So, so the Terragor is one of those clan clans or tribes. Uh, this one's the the rain caller who uh, has uh, essence that kind of evokes water. He has uh, water abilities, throws water, attacks, and makes shields of of water bubbles around them um, this guy is amazing oh, i love yeah. the model work <laughs> and eli's done an amazing job on these and oh, and these are so just cool. a shaman these are kind of the ones that are uh, divine and have a little bit of a connection there there's much bigger ones, much more even scarier ones like the Marauders and the, the Berserkers and even the Khan, which we've who seen. Did the, who, oh, wow. Look at that. I'm sorry. I'm just looking over in the distance and I see this this giant like tower structure. Yeah, that's the, the Tower of Carfin under a curse that is causing a lot of problems for the area, too. Oh, you're right. Actually, I think if we approach up here. We actually cross over into the boundary of Carfin, the wreckage of Carfin, right? It's like science. Correct, it's yeah. And Carfin was a one of the great cities of the Aelin Empire, and it's now in, in ruin. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I see it. That, my friends, that you're seeing off in the distance is, gonna, is in Alpha 2, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and Jeremy, tell us a little bit about the tower and its – and what – you know, just a little bit, not nothing to give okay. away too much, but just a little sure. bit about the tower. What is it? What is the tower it, from a player's It was a focus of the, the mages and study of the Aelin Empire. Carfin was a city that, that kind of had a, a great mage population, so it had a university there. Um, and things went bad there during, during the last days of the, the fall. Um, they made some desperate measures in a really awesome... Uh, 
quest series that um that Scott's written up and and implemented and things. That's awesome. So it's 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 going to be a pretty fun tower that oh, is yeah. uh, intended for many groups to mm -hmm. exist within and fight. Now, Trad, question. What Answer. type of weapon am I using? Thank you. What type of weapon am I using here? This would be the longbow. Um, so you can kind of tell, like when you're when you're shooting your basic attack, that the shots are a little bit slower, but have more power behind them. Um, yeah, I really like the model that Atkins threw together for this. Oh, it um, looks so good. Looks like it's of an Empyrean design. So yes. one of the very Empyrean bow makers of the the past. Maybe Ooh. someone's remembered the techniques to make it. It looks so good. So yeah, now, go and shoot okay, go something ahead. with it. Like, go ahead and uh, and hold the button down. One thing that we're playing around with this that we haven't done with our melee weapons is it has a contextual behavior based on if you're tapping the um, just you know pressing the the button versus holding it. Um, so kind of like snipe, you know, you can actually hold these attacks, and instead of doing just a rapid I'm, fire, I'm sorry, just have... Trad, one second. Something sure. happened. These like these little birds just spawned right near me and they're like eating on the ground. If I move, will they move? I hope so. Okay, let's see. Let's find out. Birds. How are you just going to sit here <laughs> and let me run around you? What what are they doing? They're just kind of they're eating, I guess. Oh no. Okay, wait, what do you want me to do this weapon? Um, hold, hold your Q button and charge up an attack. Uh, Houston, we might have a problem. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, get your shots of water ready. We may be uh, in a little early. I'm so sorry. Let me see if I can. Don't worry, you have got her. Perfect. Oh, I know, it's true, it's true. I just don't want to. Give the Minotaur another problem. Oh, yep. <laughs> what was that? Did he charge me? He got you. hitting you with those water bolts. Oh, that's kind of cool. So I can jump while shooting this. Now just imagine that I have a lot more health. Nobody look at the health. Don't look at my health. What are they shooting at us, Jeremy? Uh, those are from their... They're casting this water bolt, this really hardened water that's just, just slamming into you for force damage oh. that oh. hits, yeah. That's kind of cool. All right, Trad, I apologize. I am now going to appropriately engage from the <laughs> correct get, get the jump on him positions. Okay, so something cool about the longbow. <clears throat> oh, now they fly away. Look at that. The birds are flying. Something cool about the longbow is that as opposed to the short bow, you are able to actually hold and charge each of the basic attacks. Is that correct? Yep. And doing so, what does that do for the weapon user? Uh, currently, it's just a damage increase, but you know, some we can do all sorts of things with this later. Like you know, if you're charging it up longer, then you can set up some kind of status effect combo. You know, there's all kinds of things that we can do with it. But yeah, right now, um, it just increases the damage. And so, for example, one thing you could do is you could do two basic shots and then charge the final shot, and that would give you like a big spike of damage there at the end. So oh, that's each cool. Be charged individually. Wow, that's pretty cool. And now we have some abilities that we talked about. These are from the Ranger archetype. Of course, we're not going to show everything that the Ranger has, but we are going to give you guys some ideas of the abilities in its kit. Um, what is this first ability called? This is Snipe? Yeah, this is Snipe. Um, this is the one I was talking about earlier where it's kind of like the basic attack, but a lot more powerful. Um, you can hold this and when you see that little flash there at the end, that indicates that it's fully charged. Um, That's a can, strong ability. Yeah, you can keep holding it in case you want to, like, you know, wait for the target to get low before you, you know, bring them down if they're getting healed. All, all kinds of things that you can do, but after a certain point, it stops um, getting charged on the max damage. Oh, that's cool. He's just healing. Oh, he's he's healing. Horn. Now, the... What happens? Let's get into that environment where I'm getting chased by a few creatures. Hold on. Let's see if I can find a couple more because I know there's another ability we have called airstrike, which is kind of cool. 
Let's see. Yes. Really cool. So now let's say, for example, as the ranger, I have these creatures and this melee guy is on me and I want to reposition. Tell me a little bit about what airstrike does. Airstrike does a lot of things. Um, it moves the character in the direction that you're facing, um, and it rains three projectiles down in the path that you're going. Um, and each of those projectiles does damage, and AoE, and also the targets. So you could think of this more as like, not quite an ultimate ability, but it's, it's definitely up there. Yeah, that ability is so rad. I love using it. You can see it's yeah. channeling nature essence to cause roots to come up and bind to grab the Minotaur and hold them. And now this yeah. quick shot ability, by the way, that um, I see it, ha it has a debuff that looks like the quick shot icon on the target. What's that doing? Uh, that so basically each shot of quick shot will increase the damage of the next application of that specific attack against the against the target so it kind of encourages to unload all three of your charges for a big spike of burst damage but that does come at the cost of each charge comes back individually so you either have to wait a longer period of time to get that burst um, or you can just kind of weave them in here and there if you want more readily available damage got it that's super cool so i have here now a reticle on my screen so we've switched from tab target mode, which is a point and click with the cursor or using tab to cycle targets based on proximity priority, right? And into this <clears throat> reticle based mode, which now you can see the targeting plate in the top is slightly grayed out. And we do that to demonstrate that that is a soft lock target versus a hard lock target. And what a soft lock target is, Trad, do you want to explain a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. So if you if you are in action mode and you don't have a target actually selected like you would in a tab target game, um, then it'll just smartly choose whatever target it thinks is the most appropriate for where your camera is and attack that target. Um, but if you were to actually select a target, I think, it, is it right mouse button in action mode? Right. Right now, it's of course, all this stuff is customizable by the user. But if you press the, the right mouse button in action mode, it will hard lock the target, which means you can take your reticle off the target and it won't change. Correct, Chad? Right. That's awesome. Now we have another type of ranged weapon show oh and i can still while in action mode i can still tab to cycle targets as well yeah we really wanted to um, showcase a more tab based combat here because we in the last live stream um all of our melee attacks were they were more hitboxes right they didn't acquire a hard target um and so we wanted to show a little bit more of that in this stream and so you know, right, right here, for example, target. Um, you're not having to aim your reticle or anything like that. It's more what you, in line with what you do, that's a more traditional type of game. Um, but at the same time, we still have abilities like airstrike and you know other things that we're we haven't even shown yet that are going to be more action oriented. So we can hopefully hit the sweet spot of having a nice combination of all that. And it's more, more fun. I've played Rangers in EQ, EQ2, the great archer types in, in Guild Wars and Hunters and WoW. And when it's this mode with the reticle and stuff, it's just fun running around shooting these guys. Oh, it is super fun. And I've switched over to the short bow now. So let me see if I can show off that short bow into a good light. One second. Um, I'll exit this mode. There we go. So now I have a short bow equipped versus the <coughs> excuse me versus the long bow. And talk to me a little bit about the difference in the short bow tread. Sure, yeah. The direction that we went with the short bow was a lot more I almost want to say acrobatic. Like you can use this a lot more freely. Uh, with the movement it doesn't slow you as much. Um, it's it's a higher rate of fire. Uh, basically, this is this is the more mobile feeling, lightweight uh, version of the longbow. 
Um, so it's not quite as powerful because um, you are trade. You're, you're you're making some trade-offs here um, with range and attack speed. And I, I do think right, right now we're actually putting a higher crit rate on this one, so it's got the first potential. Um, but these are just the kinds of decisions that you want the players to be making when they're selecting their weapon choice. What, what do I value? I love the the movement of that. Yeah, I think I mean it is a very different feeling, right? Um, one, I'm much more mobile, being able to shoot and not have to sacrifice a lot of my movement speed like I had to with the longbow. So just from that aspect alone, it feels like a very different weapon. I'm also not able to charge. I'm just kind of I'm holding down the attack, and it's just firing a bunch. You'll see that I can blind fire because I'm in action mode. Um, that's why I'm like firing extra there, but it is it feels very different. Um, and of course, it doesn't change the way you have access to your abilities. Your abilities are there regardless of the, the type of range weapon necessarily you're using. Um, <clears throat> short bow or long bow. Um, and then I don't have to have a hard target lock also now for the abilities either. I, they tie off of the reticle. And I know there's some feedback that we wanted to collect from players with regards to this demonstration. You want to talk a little bit about that, Trent? Yeah, um, uh, as always, every time we make an ability, we're, we're pretty much always thinking about what is what is the right balance between um, restricting player movement for the sake of, of weight, um, you know, getting getting the feeling of the weight and that, that being able to animate the full body, um, all the good things that come along with, you know, um, restricting movement. But at the same time, uh, we definitely don't want to be a game that makes it frustrating to, you know, attack and move at the same time. And a lot of people, you know, what, what I think a lot, a lot of people love in MMO is, is the feeling of agency and freedom in combat, and we want to um, retain that. So uh, just as you see these abilities go off and uh, you know, get used in this environment, like just, I guess we appreciate any feedback on how that direction is going. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. And also from the enemy side, ask, and asking on behalf of like Doug's encounter group, it's how fast are it's, is the combat playing? Um, is it too slow? Is it too fast? Does it feel good? Um, the time to kill or what, what you're seeing right now? Or is it uh, what what players are liking? Do people right. like? And and keeping in mind these are are solo ones right now. These are. Uh, tune more for solo fighting. Um, these aren't elite group mobs, but for one-on-one -on -one type of fights. Yeah, I like um, in the solo areas. You know, this for me, this speed feels pretty good, uh, given that I'm a you know DPS class, and these guys are particularly susceptible to rangers because they are um, they are. Uh, mage class NPCs. Uh, but, you know, getting your guys' opinion on those things. Also, the differences between the weapon types, right? We talked a little bit about the longbow. We talked a little bit about the shortbow. Um, you know, being able to kind of uh, give us feedback on how you feel the direction uh, has gone now. Uh, is this the type of ranged combat you're looking for? Those of you out there, especially who are bow users and enjoy these classes, you know, what is it about the games that you have played that you felt had good uh, range combat uh, in it and are you seeing elements of that demonstrated in this type of combat as well um, I can tell you that obviously seeing is, is one thing um, in Alpha 2 uh, those of you who have access will be able to give us kind of your feel feedback um, and uh, you know of course that's not under NDA so all of us get to watch and participate in Alpha 2 um, through uh, through watching others play it and, and getting their feedback and experiences as well um, <clears throat> Another thing that I think is is pretty cool that I wanted to talk about actually um, was these uh, weapons and the types of, um, of skill trees that they have associated with them. Trey, do you want to talk to us a little bit about you know how these skill trees interact with the weapon? For sure. Yeah. Um, part of the plan with each of these weapons is they'll each have a unique skill tree associated with them. Um, to differentiate them not only in terms of feel, but also 
in terms of mechanics and uh, a, an important thing that we really want to capture in Ashes is is the, for the ability um, uh, basically so the player can build their character you know how, how they want and that extends beyond just their class choice right um, so for example if I'm the ranger I can spec into my short bow or I can spec into my long bow and those will be two different very different builds um, for example the short bow may specialize or have have a part of its tree that specializes in applying bleeds and bleeds might synergize with specific ranger abilities that you know the longbow um, might not necessarily synergize with so weapon choice will play into like what abilities and your, and your type you're specializing in um, there's just a lot that goes into it and we're just you know, starting to scratch the surface of that and you would also want to take into account the enemies you're going up against, what areas you're going into, what enemies you're hunting, and is it a player versus uh, a monster? Players will be, you know, be very differently, and is a longbow getting the drop on them important? Can, are you spec for short bow for being dodgy and moving around them? You got all those things to keep in mind. Absolutely. Well, guys, appreciate you joining us today to talk about this stuff. It is amazing that the, the world you guys are building, the, the mechanics here. I hope everyone in the audience has enjoyed the demonstration. Uh, talk to us. Give us your feedback. Tell us what you liked about it, uh, what you would like to see changed. Uh, make sure you do so on the YouTube video and Twitch, on Reddit, on our forums, everywhere you possibly can. It means so much to us to be able to kind of reflect on what the community has to say about the works in progress we're showing you towards Alpha 2. Um, Jeremy, Trad, thank you very much for joining. It is always appreciated. Hearts in chat. These guys are doing awesome. Yes, Purple Heart. These guys are doing awesome, uh, awesome work. And I'm, I'm loving the progress and I'm loving sharing with me. As I know you and everyone else on the team who make these streams possible enjoys it. And with that said, everyone, we will see you back on stream. Thanks, everyone. A good one.